Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and today we are going to be talking about headers and linking. So before we can talk about any of that stuff, we're gonna have to talk about a few things. The order this video will go through is first we will talk about declaration versus definition. Then we'll talk about header files and then we'll talk about linking and compiling multiple files. So the first thing we wanna talk about is declaration versus definition. So in C++, you have two forms of basically defining things. You can say, uh, I have a function that's gonna return an integer and I'm gonna call this function f-u-n-c func. And then I'm gonna put a semicolon. We have declared that there is going to be a function at some point that looks like this. We have not defined this function. We could go on later on in the program and define the function and call it down here. And this will basically just say return two, three, four. Okay. Now the C++ program can see this before we get into the main function. It says, oh, hey, there is a function that returns an integer somewhere in the program. We don't know where, but we do know it's available. And we can basically call that function in here. I'll just call it right here. And we'll just say this is uh, func, <laughs> okay. And then later on during compilation, the C++ file will find it down here. And during the linking phase is when it patches this, okay? So basically you have your compilation phase, which just says, hey, there is a function called func somewhere in this binary stuff. I don't know where it is, but I know it exists because we have it declared here. Now, technically it could not exist and we'll see what happens when that's true. Then during the linking phase, it says, hey, uh, I don't really know where this is, go find it. And then it finds it here and it says, hey, this is where it is. And it patches those function pointers and does all that stuff behind the scenes for us. And if it doesn't find it, then during the linking phase, we get an error saying, uh, this function does not exist. We couldn't find it anywhere. So this is basically the difference between definition and declaration, right? We declare it here, we define it here. And we can do the same thing with variables. I can declare an integer A here notice it's not defined the value inside this a variable is undefined because we have not defined it so if we later on in the program say a equals zero we have defined what a is and we can also do that in line we can say a equals zero and same thing with the function we could define it up here as well like we did with our main function so let's compile this real quick just make sure everything works as we think it should okay so i have my developer command prompt open and i am inside of our directory so i will just call build.batch it builds our main.exe and then it tells us that we have an object file that was created and everything. So let's go into bin, make sure we got that executable. I was wondering why we couldn't find main.executable and I think it's because inside of the build.batch, yeah, we're calling it your name instead of just main. So let's change this up real quick. We'll call this main.exe so I don't get confused again and we'll patch that up over here as well. Now, if we actually go ahead and build, then we go to bin slash main with a backslash, not a forward slash. Okay. Finally, once you do all that right, we see func is two, three, four. And let me just clear the screen, run that one more time. So if we run bin main.exe, func was two, three, four. Now, why is it useful to have something like this where we can make definition or we can make declarations, but not definitions? That's because C++ operates on this thing called header files, right? And this allows you to hide implementation much like OOP from the actual users of your code, right? If we look into hash stood lib .h, what you'll notice is we only have declarations here. There is no definition to these functions that we are calling, yet we can still call them because the linker takes care of that part for us. So we can go ahead and make our own header file, okay? So if we just go into here and say new file, I'm gonna call this main.h, which is the standard for header files. We can go ahead and define func in here. We can say func is a function that returns an int. It is somewhere in the program. Then we can go ahead and actually, I'm going to rename this just to make this a little bit more explicit. Let's name this math.h and then we'll actually add in some math functions in here just so we can see how this all works. Okay. And instead of calling this func, I'm going to call this add, which takes in an a integer a integer b. Then we'll make another file, call this math.cpp. Okay. And now we can define inside of here what that function is. So first we would have to say include math.h, which basically says there's a function definition in here that I would like to define. Then we can go ahead, copy that, create the definition here, and we'll just say return a plus b. 
Now, users of our program can go into here and say, I want to hash include math.h. And actually, I'm going to use quotations. Usually, when it's a file you created, you use quotations. But if you're including something else, you can use angle brackets, which is usually like system or library directories. Okay, but uh, they are interchangeable, so you can use quotation or angle brackets, and it'll work the same. But I'm saying include math.h. Okay, so we're saying include those declarations. So we know that there is a function called add. And we're going to say one, uh, two to five. Okay. And Visual Studio is going to give me a hard time because it doesn't realize that uh, I've actually included it here, which is kind of annoying. And to get it set up correctly is kind of a pain. I'm going to be moving away from Visual Studio code pretty soon anyway. So this won't be a problem for long. But this function does exist. And if we call this uh, add two and five, then if we go into our build.batch, we're going to have to add one more thing here. So not only are we compiling main.cpp, but now we're also compiling dot dot slash math.cpp, okay? And also, I don't think I explained, but forward slashes and backslashes. Backslashes are for files, forward slashes are for compiler options. So this slash link basically says this is an option I'm using, this says this is a file I'm using. Now, we are compiling both files, a link takes care of the rest for us, we're outputting this main.executable. So if we go ahead and we run build.batch, first of all, we get a main.obj and a math.obj. So we got binaries for both of our files, and we also got a main.exe. So if we go ahead and look into main.exe, run this, add two and five, we get seven, <laughs> okay? So what we've just done is we've compiled multiple files by including another one here. We have linked them together and everything. Now, here's an interesting thing, okay? There is a compiler option called slash C. What slash C does is it says, and this is on GCC as well if you're on Linux, this says uh, only compile, do not link, okay? So if we were to do this slash C, and then I believe if we go ahead and say CL main.obj and math.obj slash link, and then we'll say slash out main.exe. Uh, we're basically separating the two phases. So we're explicitly saying compile first, then link. So if we were to run this one more time, so if we say build.batch, okay, we get sort of two things, right? First, we get main.cpp, math.cpp generating code, okay? What does that do? That basically generates the main.obj and the math.obj, and we can make this super explicit. So let's go ahead, we will delete these files. And then I'm going to comment out by typing in rem in Windows, hashtag in Linux. We will comment out this line, and this will do just the compilation, okay? So if we run this one more time, we'll say build.batch. Uh, Main.cpp, math.cpp, generating code. Look at that. We got our OBJ files, okay? So we have just showed that basically what we're doing is we're generating these files with this command. And then if we run this command afterwards, we're saying use those files that were just generated, main.obj, math.obj, link them together. So basically now main.cpp says there's this function. I don't know where it is. I just know it exists because I've been told it exists. And then in the linking phase, we find this file and we find this binary and we patch it together. Okay. What happens if we're missing math.obj? So what happens if we're missing our linking definition, right? Or even better, what we could do is what if we just comment all of this out, which is effectively the same as not linking OBJ, right? Because we're not providing an implementation. Well, if we build this one more time, uh, we get this error, okay? Error LNK 2019. So what this says is this is a link error. And this tells us this happened during the linking phase of our compilation process, our build process. And it says unresolved external symbol, int cdecl, which you can ignore, uh, it's basically saying it has an integer return type and it adds two integers together. This is the mangled name, okay? You can ignore that as well. That's something that happens uh, and it's different across platforms. So if you're on Windows, it'll be different even from different compiler versions. But basically we see this was referenced in function main, okay? If this is your first time looking at this, this may look really weird and strange, but basically uh, this error LNK 2019, what does that mean first of all? Well, if we go to Google and we type in link error 2019, then you can go to uh, Microsoft's documentation right here. 
I'll click this because this is the official source. If you're on GCC, you would look at GCC source. Uh, then it tells us exactly what this is. Unresolved external symbol reference and function function. <laughs> okay. The compiled code for function makes a reference or call to a symbol, but the linker can't find the symbol definition in any of the libraries or object files to link. This tells us exactly what is happening. And then the Microsoft documentation even gives us possible causes. It tells us the source file. It tells us all this different stuff about what this means. So it gives us a lot of help. And it's really helpful if you don't know what to do if you're seeing one of these errors. Always look up the error code if you have no idea what to do. It will help tremendously. And even if you're looking at here too, we can sort of see what it's saying. It's saying there is an external symbol, right? We defined it here. We declared it here, but we didn't define it. So as far as the compiler is concerned, it could be coming from anywhere. It's just an external symbol. And that actually has specific meanings that we'll talk about later on too. But basically it's just saying uh, this int function add, we couldn't find it and it's referenced in main, which is exactly what happened, right? So then if we were to re-comment this back in, then when we build, we will get that error resolved. We get our main.exe and it works again. Now, what happens if we don't add it inside of our build, right? So what happens if we don't link math.obj? We just say cl main.obj slash link slash out main.exe. Well, we get the same error, okay? Because the same exact thing will happen. So we will run build and we get a linker error once again. This time it's for a different reason. It's because we didn't include the binaries, right? So we didn't even compile. Well, we did compile it. We produced the binaries, but we didn't tell it in the linking phase. Hey, we're also taking binaries from this file specifically. Okay. And so if you want to actually tell it to take this file, which you should, because you need to tell it that <laughs> if you do that, then it will resolve everything for you. And we can build once again, we can run once again, it works fine. So this is sort of a very quick introduction to header files, right? We put in our declarations. Don't put definitions in header files. It uh, complicates things. And then we put in our definitions in a CPP file. Now, one last thing about header files, uh, include this line because what happens, right? Uh, basically if we include a header file twice, we will get in, we'll get an error. Okay. So let's remove this line first of all. And I'm going to go into main.cpp. What if you accidentally included math.h, which you may be like, that's stupid. I would never do that. And you might not, but uh, the way hash include works is you can often have this file, including more files, which includes more files, which includes more files. And then accidentally you do get something like this without even meaning it. Well, what happens when we have this? If we run build, it actually runs just fine because <laughs> we don't have any implementation code inside of math.h. But if we were to include some implementation logic, which could happen for several reasons. So what if we actually implemented this inside of math.h and you include that twice? Let's compile one more time. Okay, there we go. That's what I was looking for. So we get this error, which is during the compile phase. And you can tell that because it doesn't say LMK, which means link. It's just error. Okay, that tells you, and you could do the same thing here. Look up C2084 and it'll tell you exactly what it is. But we look right here. It says function int add already has a body. What's happening? Uh, basically, since we included it twice, it's copying this, pasting it over this. Then it's copying again, pasting over this, right? And then we get two definitions. Compiler gets confused. Which one should I use? I don't know. And so then it tells us we have a problem. But if you go in here and you say hash pragma once, what this says is include this only once if it is ever included in a file, don't duplicate. Okay. That's basically all it means. So then if we were to build one more time and why was that happening? Uh, I'm actually kind of stupid. So, <laughs> uh, look at where it's coming from. I didn't even look at where this was coming from. It's coming from math.h line four, which does make sense, but yeah, it's not good. Well, it does tell us here. It's already defined in main.obj. So it's saying, Hey, we already have that in here. Uh, basically what's happening is we have it defined here also. So let's just sort of comment this out for now <laughs> and then we'll be able to see what I was going to talk about and also make sure to comment out the hash include math in here because yeah, that will produce problems as well. Okay. Finally, now if we build this, okay, this is what I was trying to show. Uh, it works, right? If we remove this prab once, uh, after all that stuff is commented out in the CPP file, it breaks. 
uh, we get an error. It's already defined. If we add pragma once in, it does not break. It works fine. Okay. So basically, header files always start it with a hash pragma once, or uh, alternatively, you can say hash if not define math h. So like the name of your file underscore h hash define math h. Then down here at the very bottom of your file, say end if. Okay. This does the same thing as hash pragma once. Uh, we'll talk about what all this stuff is actually doing under the hood, but it does exactly the same thing. Hash pragma once is just a little bit more concise, and I prefer it because it just looks nicer and stuff. Okay, right? It's just a little bit easier. But anyways, we'll redo this. This was all for example purposes. I would definitely suggest don't include implementations in your header files. Implementations go in CPP. Header files contain just declarations. So then if we remove that again, we will be fine no matter what happens. And uh, like I said, always do a pragma once. That's just so that you don't run into the problem we just saw. All right. And that is it for this tutorial. We have learned how to compile multiple files. We have learned what the linking phase does, why it is important. And we've also learned how to create header files, which show a declaration and implementation files called CPP, which hold the definition of these header files, okay? Uh, use this information and re-implement your guess a number game, okay? But this time, use header files to uh, basically create a suite of a guess a number game, right? So I basically want you to do something like guess number dot h, and then inside of here have like uh, int get user guess, and of course you want to have your hash pragma once, and then you could also have like int run game. And then you could also have uh, <laughs> whatever else you want. Okay. Basically the point is put all of your declarations inside of a header file and then put your definitions inside of a CPP file. Now I almost forgot this. Uh, one last thing I have to do is show you the solution to the guess a number game that I use. So I had this linked in the last video. So if you want to, you can go to that link and it's also linked in this video, but this is just a GitHub just containing my code for this. Uh, I have the build.batch file, which is a very simple batch file. And then I have my main program, which basically just says, let's define and uh, don't worry about the const. We'll talk about that at another time. Probably shouldn't have used that here, but we just have a max number called hundred and then a min number called zero. And then I, uh, this is all inside the main function, by the way, too. I generate a random seed for the random number generator, generate a random number between max and min uh, by doing this whole little math equation. And then I print, I'm thinking of a number between min max, I define or I declare our user guess and then I do a do while loop, right? So I say, make a guess. I get the user's guess. Then I say, if it's less than generated number, I print out guess higher. If it's greater, print guess lower. Otherwise I say, you got it because that's the only other alternative. Ask them to play again. I scan F. This was a tricky part. Uh, you have to add a space between the percent C if you want to scan a character. And that's just because of a quirk of the scan F function. Okay. And we'll look at better ways to get input in future tutorial. Then I just check if it's Y or uppercase Y, generate a new random number, and then it just repeats while the user guess does not equal the generated number, right? Because basically if we get to this point and they press no, then this will be uh, true and then we'll exit. Or actually, this will be false, we'll exit. Otherwise, we generate a new random number, this is true, so we just continue. Uh, simple solution. If you did something different, that's completely fine. And I basically just want you to recode this using the header files like we talked about, maybe separate it out into a couple of functions. Anyways, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next tutorial, which we will talk about preprocessor directives.